Welcome to As the Story Grows. I'm Brian Patton. Today we welcome Chaney Elaine from House Parties to the podcast. House Parties released their latest EP, Side Effects, back in January with Equal Vision Records. Chaney talks about the importance of Haley Williams and Paramore, being excited to find a band name that wasn't taken, signing with Equal Vision, working towards the future, and more. I love getting to share new artists with the world, and I think people will really dig House Parties. Make sure you check out the show notes for links to our mailing list, Discord server, and Patreon page. I've been sharing playlists in the newsletter the last few Fridays, so join the mailing list. Enjoy getting to know House Parties. got hot all of a sudden over here okay <laughs> out of like the blue i don't know it was cold and then it was just like suddenly like 80 degrees and we're like what the heck i'm not ready for summer yet <laughs> that's terrible this is why i like i can't imagine living somewhere where it is perpetually warm all the time it's like i'm a lifelong east coaster and it gets hot as shit here anyways in the summer and i'm like i wouldn't want that in january like that sounds awful yeah, i mean usually it's not it's just, <laughs> i don't know for yeah. hot in february i don't know like right now it's humid like 70s humid and i'm like i don't know <laughs> it's like it's still february it's just it's mm-hmm. not time for that shit <laughs> right yeah is that where you grew up um yes yeah born and raised nice what was growing up like Growing up in Texas, um, <laughs> uh, you just get used to the heat in like the summers, yeah, um, and not seeing any like landscape anywhere. Well, you have trees, and that's about it. There's not yeah. like any pretty mountains or anything. If you gotta go towards like Austin or like West Texas, it gets like that, but not like in the Dallas area. No, yeah, I just I just remember. I've not spent a lot of time in Texas, but I drove across country from California to DC and uh, I just drove through like the, the top part of Texas and it took forever and it was flat and desertous and there was nothing to see it. I was like, will this ever end? Pretty much. <laughs> I was like, God, this is terrible. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to get out of Texas, but yeah. until I have the money for that, here I am. Yeah. Yeah. What got you into music? Um, I've always been like a musical, music-y kind of person. Ever since I was little, like even my mom was like, she was like always, like I, she told me like I was always singing and like I eventually went into like choir. Okay. And um, I didn't really like choir, but they do teach you a lot of good techniques in there. Yeah. Um, I got to sing throughout the day, so why not? Yeah. But then I had someone in like middle school, like introduced me to like alternative emo music and that's kind of where it all changed. <laughs> yeah. 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 What were, what were the big bands at that time that you got into that? Music? Paramore. Paramore was the top one. Um, at that time it was like, um, this is going to sound crazy, but it was like 2013. Well, no, I had heard Paramore on the radio for like years, but I, yeah. I wasn't like, But in middle school, um, I had like 2013, maybe. Doesn't sound right. Yeah. High school. No, I got into like, no, I want to say Brand New Eyes was already out. Okay. And then um, it it was a long time, and then Self Title was coming out, like when I was like in high school. That's what it was. Yeah. Okay. 2013, because I graduated 2016, so I definitely was not in middle school in 2013. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i was a sophomore yeah. yeah 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 and i think um pierce the veil my chemical romance sitting with sirens like the big names like that yeah okay yeah. i was trying to get a 
grip of air because I, look let let's be honest here i listen to your band and i go oh they sound like paramore and i don't mean that in a negative way i mean like you fucking sound like paramore and they're one of the biggest like rock bands in the world so like that's a compliment that it's like you sound yeah. like fucking paramore not like yeah. oh they're just they sound like paramore no yeah so it's I like it. i'm like yeah that would seem to be an inspiration but you know i don't be like oh you're a girl singer so you you sound like paramore right <laughs> like you come off as like old guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, no it's i'm i'm pretty much just used to it but thank you yeah, <laughs> yeah. At, at what point in that were you like okay i have to start a band and do this mm -hmm. yeah i i've always liked singing man like i i know it's like super cliche for like anyone listening but like it really was like the moment when i saw like discovered Paramore and I saw like what Haley Williams was like doing. I was like, that's exactly what I want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, this be this badass woman on stage all the time. Yeah. And then, you know, there were other bands that were at the time, like really big, like tonight alive. Hey, Monday, we're the in crowd. And I saw those bands and I was like, yeah, I want to be just like them. Yeah. So I Paramore was like the gateway, but it wasn't just solely Paramore. It's it's a fascinating discovery of like that time of music because like, you know, when when I was in junior high and high school, like punk and emo and hardcore bands were not on television. And then like hate breeds on MTV and it's like, holy shit, and dashboard confessionals on MTV and you're like, Oh, we made it. We made it. Right. But like that was mainstream music for your generation. It's just like Paramore and my chem, the fucking biggest bands in the world. <laughs> yeah. I see, I was very late to the game with like the whole MySpace and like MTV era. Yeah. Unfortunately. But um I I wish I was there. But I was like <laughs> too young to even realize what was happening yeah. <laughs> at the time. So you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was the music scene like for you locally? Um, like at that time or like, yeah, at that time, I mean, I, at that age, like my first concert I ever went to was in like 2013 at a Paramore show. Okay. I was very late to getting into the scene. Um, cause I just, I don't know. I listened to like pop music on the radio and I didn't really like, I just list, like listening to music, but I didn't really have like a sense of like what do I genuinely like love to listen to? Like, what mm -hmm. do I enjoy? What's my favorite artist, my favorite band, you know, until I discovered that type of music. Um, so I was just kind of really like late to the scene. So I don't really have like at that time. I, yeah, I don't know. It was just, I mean, I went to warp tour, <laughs> <laughs> but you weren't involved in like a local punk scene or anything. Or, no. no, no, I was too young. Well, I mean, like, not too young, but, like, my parents were very, like, you have to let me know where you're going, you know, <laughs> yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And, like, I didn't know about the scene at that age. I yeah. just had to see these bands. My friend at the time who helped me, we never really talked about, like, local stuff. It was more just, like, oh, my God, like, this band's coming, like, in mm -hmm. this month. Um, we should go see it. Or, like, we should go to Warped Tour, et cetera, et cetera. So, that's kind of what it was like. And then even like back then I didn't really, I wasn't even in a band, but I still was like writing songs and like fantasizing about being a rock star. Yeah. <laughs> you know, here I am starting yeah. to live that dream. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's talk about house parties. How this band get started. This band got started after another band that me and Spencer were in did not work out, unfortunately. Um, but things happen. And we liked writing music together. We thought um, the way that we wrote just mixed very well. And um, eventually we just were like, let's just do like a little side project for now until we are ready for a band. Then the time came for a band. I discovered the band, uh, the name House Parties was not taken by anybody. And I was like, yes, <laughs> I was I was on top of the moon. Like I didn't even have a meaning. I at the time I just was like, "It's a cool band name that's not taken. I'm taking it right <laughs> um, before I get stuck again." Yeah. So I think that, and then 
we went on to social media and um, needed like a bassist and a drummer. And that's how, well, I knew of Haley from another band that she was in. So I kind of knew her and then she wanted to join. So I just, we just let her join. We're like, yeah, I've seen you play. Like you're awesome. Um, and then Wesley, we had just become like mutuals on social media at the time. I'd never like talked really or like met in person. Yeah. So, um, he reached out saying like, he's ready to try this whole band thing again. And we were like, cool. So we sent like an audition over like, and what Spencer tells me is that, cause he wrote all this stuff for like tiny rooms and hindsight, our first stuff. And mm -hmm. he had written the parts intentionally, like, like drum parts, like intentionally kind of difficult to play. <laughs> But Wesley was over here just auditioning and playing it. And we were like, oh, okay. He's like super insanely talented. You're in. And the rest is history. We're still going strong. Yeah, well, Haley's cool. no longer with us because she had a had a baby, hmm. um, which is great. Cause just happy for her. Yeah. And um, she ever wants to play live. She's always welcome. <laughs> um, but as far as like band members, it's just like the three of us. Yeah. And it just works. Yeah. Yeah. That first single drops 2021. What was it like trying to navigate? I mean, I imagine Texas opened and had less restrictions than some places. Yeah. Other things went, but how was like the writing recording process, getting this project off the ground? Um, so Spencer like also does a lot of like producing as well. Okay. Um, and so does Wesley and they're kind of like, what I like to call Spencer and Wesley is like hidden gems because not only are they really good at their craft, but they can also play like every other instrument. Like they also do like Wesley can also play guitar, bass, sing. Spencer can also play drums, sing and bass. Like, you know, it's kind of like, I'm the only one that can just sing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any other hidden talents <laughs> <laughs> that are not like music related, but yeah. uh, so I call them like little hidden gems because they really are. And um, so Spencer like produces a lot as well. So at the time we live in this house. Well, we had written the songs because he used like, you know, he programs everything, but mm -hmm. we wanted to like fully record vocals. When we moved into this house, he built kind of like a homemade studio, nothing crazy fancy, just like a portable kind of like homemade studio. Yeah. And um we recorded vocals down there and like we had like three different types of mics set up and um just sitting there like all day just recording vocals um and yeah and then he just kind of at the time we had gotten into contact with seth henderson who does like real friends knuckle puck um like to mix everything and yeah. he mixed it and it was yeah Rest, yeah. Nice. And here we are today. How'd you guys get connected with Equal Vision Records? I was emailing like every like label I could saying like, we're at this new band, you know, whatever. You know, at the time, I didn't really know what labels were looking for. Mm -hmm. so I was just, um, you know, I was emailing left and right to like everybody. And um, I guess like in 2022, we got like an email. I got like no emails back from anyone, by the way, which is like, whatever. I get it. We were very <laughs> small. And um, I got an email in like 2022 while we were like on the road. And that like, Dan had hit us up and was like, um, like he's interested. And then we were like freaking out. But then um, we never like heard back, which cool, whatever. Like yeah. it's, we're just gonna keep doing our thing. And then whenever we started writing with Derek, we got connected with our agent, our booking agent, which then got us back into connection with, with Equal Vision. And then, um, yeah, 2023 was really like we got connected with everybody and um they were like why did we like why did we never like reply back? I just got so busy. <laughs> and uh, now we're on the label, so <laughs> Yeah. That's right. You guys just put out this EP called 
uh, side effects. Where did the title from the record come from? Um, I thought of it. No, we had a different name for it, and I legit cannot even remember what it was. <laughs> we had like another name for the longest time, and like randomly one day, I was like, I like this name better. So I texted everyone. And they were like, "Cool, we like it." too so cool and then i just changed the side effects and i cannot for the life of me remember what the other like ep name was okay try to think of it and i i can't remember it and i'm like i don't know um (laughs) but uh yeah i thought it fit a lot better because the ep for me at least means that like i guess besides like brain dead but like the other songs it's kind of just well i guess you could include brain dead um just like other emotions and like that you experience that are not just like you're sad, happy, whatever. It's kind of like other emotions, like, yeah. like side effects of like living from life. That's kind of how I, I just, I don't know. It felt like the right name to call it. So yeah. there side effects was born. Nice. It's actually been one month today since the EP came out. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's right. Who did the album artwork and what was the concept behind that? Um, so I can't remember his last name, but his name is Kevin of, of soft surrogate. He's actually the same person that did uh spirit boxes, eternal blue okay. album artwork. Um, love that record. Love that band. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I wanted to, uh, I was on Pinterest and I kept like coming across pictures of like these people, like waving their head and like the exposure between made it look like, it was like blurry, but like mm-hmm. you can still see like a face here, here, and here. I was like, what if we did like different like emotions while mm-hmm. someone was doing that? And he was like, I got you. And he came up with it and we were like, this is it. Cool. Um, kind of like the whole play on side effects, just different yeah. emotions. It's been out, yeah, like you said, a month. What's your plans for the rest of this year? Writing, writing, uh, writing our, our big first LP, um, and uh, touring, yeah, playing shows. Yeah, you have anything lined up or just like waiting and spending time? Just trying, um, to- we just announced that we're playing Four Chord Music Festival in Pittsburgh on June 23rd for the second day okay um, that'll be really fun but we're next month oh today's also the one month of when tour starts next month yes nice. for games we play awesome. um so that'll be really fun yeah yeah that's cool albums out now on cd and cassette it's pretty cool to like have your album out there in physical media like that right mm-hmm. it is we had like our old ep tiny rooms i have some vinyls of it over here and it's pretty like I'll be going through my vinyl and I'll see it. And I'll be like, Oh my God, this is insane. How it's just on like a giant vinyl. Yeah. 